welcome to the Power Platform Show. Full show notes for this episode can be found at nz365guy.com forward slash 238. Before we chat with today's guest, here's a quick message from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by ISV Connected. If you're an ISV, you need to check out isvconnected.com, a private ISV member-only community that recently launched for the sole purpose of making ISVs successful. Yes, navigating the Microsoft ISV landscape is easy with friends. Sign up today at isvconnected.com. Well, today's guest is from London, England. He's the head of the Power Platform practice at Hitachi Solutions Europe. He studied human and medical genetics at the University of Cambridge. He is the TDG Community Worldwide leader and founder. You can find him on YouTube at Will Dorrington and on Twitter at William T. Note that. It's not Dorrington. Welcome <laughs> to the show, William Dorrington. Hey, man. How's it going? Good, mate. Good. Good to have you on here. Do you know that this is the longest time I've ever <laughs> had to go backwards and forwards to set up a meeting? And when I say longest time, it's been over a year since I started trying to get this podcast recording done with you. And I can tell you, you're going to find it entirely underwhelming. <laughs> it's going to be a year build up to what, no, what was that I, for? <laughs> you know, look, here's the question I wrote. Thanks for coming on the show, Will. Nice to have a fellow Londoner <laughs> on here. I'm not even a Londoner anymore. <laughs> we can pretend you are, if that works. Can you give me an honorary kind of... Honorary Londoner. I don't know if I'm allowed to personally, allowed to bestow that onto you. I think the mighty Johnson, the mighty Boris, Big B. Honestly, he has to do it. <laughs> when someone has a name as long as yours, you must have the ability to pronounce titles. Well, that's just very true. It's a, it's a mighty name. It's what is it? Five, six words? I don't, tell, I don't even tell know. Tell me, what is your full name? It's William George Edward Charles Christopher Dorrington. <laughs> that is all the that mighty is kings. That is beautiful. <laughs> wow blows my mind the first thing people try to do from that is try to make something humorous out of the initials but it doesn't work because it's just w g e c c d there's nothing there try your best wow wow when you fill out an application like do you put them all on there well i didn't until the point that i actually found out i had those names and then i entered it onto my passport for a bit of fun and it turns <laughs> out that now i have a little sort of message next to my name saying please see back and it's in the further additional comments section on the back of my passport now which you know it's actually proved to be a nightmare because i have to fill that out everywhere now that's my official document wow. so yeah so wow. don't do that kids at home if you've got a weird name don't use it that's rule one of life so is it on your birth certificate yes it is it is absolutely all spelt correctly all there standing to attention absolutely wow that is crazy that is crazy <laughs> now you know, we're, we're recording this on the eve of Ignite, virtual Ignite. That's happening in the next couple of hours that will kick off, as in because the evening, my time, morning, your time. And are you got any plans for Ignite? Are you looking in? I really want to. I mean, the only thing that I struggle with, and I'm sure many others do as well, is my diary doesn't always permit it. So I'm hoping to catch up in sort of my own time. You know, I won't, be able to, I won't be able to catch it while everyone else is jumping on, but I will, you know, retrospectively look through the sessions in Ignite. Absolutely. Just not as proactively as maybe a few years ago I would have when I would have actually taken, you know, some time off and sat down. Exactly. I'm, not a, I'm not afforded that pleasure anymore, Seth. Yeah, yeah, because you're at the executive layer of the business now, right? Yeah, just, I, I feel I'm just, I'm just, just the cleaner that goes around making sure everybody's okay. That's all. <laughs> So before we kick into some seriousness, tell me about your better half. Alicia, or you talk about Chris Huntingford. Because <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris is absolutely fantastic. But no, we're talking about Alicia. She's, she's doing well. She's incredibly busy at the moment. She's an entomologist and horticultural scientist. And she's constantly, at this point in time, she's got three projects on the go, I think three or two. And she's constantly going back into her laboratory to count aphids. And she spends from the hours of nine until about five counting aphids. And for those who don't know what aphids are, they're like the size of glitter and gets everywhere like glitter. 
They're, they're, so imagine counting that. Imagine just throwing a On big plants, kilo right? of... They're, oh, yeah. They're a plant problem. Yeah, they're a, they're a plant problem. That's exactly it. And, you know, and obviously they work on ways on how they can remove aphids, how they can, they, you know, aphids can destroy whole crops, etc. I mean, I'm not going to go into the science because I don't I don't know it, but maybe you can have a podcast with her one day. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but she's doing exactly. great, mate. And work, life, everything's fantastic. The only down point is she has to live with me. But hey, you can't win the lottery all the time, can you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be all right. We, you know, I've seen so many photos, never been in your bar, but you've got an amazing setup, it seems. Then you shouldn't have gone all the way to New Zealand. I know, I left too soon, but really, <laughs> with what happened with COVID, I feel like left just in time. Yeah, no, yeah, you got you got out there quick and you went to a sensible country. And I respect that, so don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, so true. Well, I am interested because I, you know, we had a pre-chat, a little chat, and what's your story with your background? What can you tell us? What's still under, you know, what's still classified and, and what can be talked about publicly? So nothing about Chris or Kyle. That's all classified. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, how far back do you want me to take it? I can go back to a brief snippet of growing out academic life and then my wild yes, ride that yes, has been yes. my career. Okay, let's, guys, by the way, those listening, I've had about four espressos. I accidentally took too many espressos this morning, and I can literally smell the (laughs) colours. So if I go too fast, I apologise, and Mark, you need to slow me down as well. You never do. You speed me up. I get far too excited around you. You're good. You're good. good. (laughs) So if we wind it back, interested family background. I, from the age of five, was taken into foster care. Quite abusive past, but, you know, they're quite quite open about it, talk about it a lot, help other foster kids through their journeys, as it were. From that, had many different foster families that I went in and out of. And i got to admit, I was very fortunate. I had fantastic foster families, incredibly supportive, and helped me sort of push myself further. And like I said, I'm wrapping through this. So from that I realized that with foster children in the UK and actually across the globe a large proportion of them go into crime go into sort of low well, not low value but low paid jobs and they don't really have a lot of collective self-worth which is really quite sad and I really saw academia as a way of getting out of that because there is a bit of a curse with foster children where they see being fostered almost as a disease when you you ask them why haven't they done something they go oh I can't do that because I'm a, I'm a foster child and you're like well it's it shouldn't be a stigma, really, because it's not your fault. It's not how you got to where you were. You didn't want to get to that point in your life. So I studied, 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 and I got obsessed with just reading books from a young age. So even from a very young age, I was reading encyclopedias and all this nerdy stuff from like the age of 12, 13. And I just loved absorbing information. And that really set me on track to go into into, into university for a long time. So we fast forward to then. I did my degree in accounting and finance. I then did a master's degree in international business. I then did another degree. In, in medical genetics because I was just obsessed with with all sort of aspects of the academic landscape as it were from science to psychology all the way down to, to, to English lit although that doesn't interest me as much I must admit and then from there during the degree I was sort of partaking in, in Royal Marine Reserves I did that for a couple of years and then left from there to do my master's degree and because of that background mixed with the fact that that I just studied you know a lot to do with strategy I ended up going to a private security company to help them, first of all, with an ordnance management piece of work they're working on. So that's things like demilitarizations, getting rid of mines in countries and all sorts of stuff. So it was really great to be part of that. And then from there, I went to maritime security, which was around Somali piracy. And then from there, I I helped out with sort of security guards in Afghanistan and Iraq. And I ended up actually being deployed to Afghanistan twice, South Sudan three times. And that was, yeah, an interesting part. And then from that, I suddenly went, well, I don't really want to keep doing this. And somebody said to me those magic words, which was, Hey, Will, uh, you've got a background in finance, haven't you? I was like, three years ago, I haven't touched my degree since. They said, have you ever heard of AX4? And I was like, no, what's what's this beast that I need to tame? And that was my entrance into the dynamics world. Yeah. And, and from then, it's just been a journey from, you know, AX4 to AX2009, 2012, dynamics for finance and ops, then CE, then Dynamics 365 for then talent, now HR. And then, of course, the mighty power platform. Wow. Wow, man. I'll let you talk now. (laughs) I just learned so much. Like, you know, we've hung out a bit and I I had some of that peripheral information, but not the detail I didn't realize. It sounds like you've had about four careers before you actually started in biz apps. It's why I look so haggard. Well, <laughs> I was saying, I was saying, like, how young were you started? Were you like fifteen? Because, mate, you're young. So, university, I was quite fortunate. I ended up going to uni earlier than 
the most. I think I was either 16 or 17 when I went to university. So when I when I got which sucked because I wasn't even part of the drinking limit. You know, the, the age of – not the age of consent. That's totally different. Uh, the- <laughs> but haven't you made up for that since? <laughs> yeah, I drink every day now to make up for that. I think that's the only way I can do it. I'm drinking right now. It's delicious. Classic. <laughs> Classic. So tell me, how did you – how did the three musketeers meet? Okay, so have you ever heard of an app called Grinder? Yep. No, but it wasn't on there. But I, no, I no, no, no. <laughs> H- hang on a second. I'll just open it now and do no. an update. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting confused. Chris and Carl met on there, yes, and then right, I met yes. them. So actually, you know, what happened in regards to Chris and Carl was it, was it was pretty awesome. It was just, it just happened. It was just one of those scenarios where you know you're thankful that the everything lined up, all the dots connected. I was in Hitachi Solutions Europe. I've been there for a long time. And there was always this pre-sales team, and there was always this very loud South African. And you know, but hey, enough about Carl, more about Chris. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> but Chris and Carl worked there, and then I got asked if I would like to join their pre-sales team as well. And and that's literally where we hit it off. But the first proper interaction I had with Carl was a rather rather crazy night in the Vegas of England. That is High Wickham, and then. Chris, Chris, well, one of my first proper interactions with Chris was around pre-sales, and he sort of was one of the champions for pulling me in. And then I was a bit nervous about one of my first proper big presentations on FNO to a prospect. I've never done one before. So Chris went, it's right, Will, meet me the night before. I'll help you get through this. I was like, oh, what a great guy. He took me to this pub, which I, if you know him, <laughs> it's a bit cliche. And then from the pub, he started off, and you know Chris has the same attention span as me. So for about three <laughs> minutes, he was literally listening to me talk about FNO. And you could just see the glaze slowly coming over his eyes. And he, he shut my laptop, put it in my bag, grabbed us. I think it was like three pints each. He's like, dude, if you can demo this drunk without a laptop, you can defo demo this sober with one. <laughs> and I was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> so, so, but hey, I, it must have worked. We, it was a successful demonstration. And that was one of my first true interactions with, with Lord Huntingford. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, so interesting. Wow. <laughs> and mate, three. Usually he's got two on to go, but three, that, that's epic. Yeah, no, he's calmed down a bit since then. <laughs> okay, so I, I didn't know that Hitachi was where the match was made in heaven with you three. And of course... Out of this great dynamic, you started TDG. Yes, absolutely. So, absolutely. so, so, how did TDG come about, and kind of what was your thinking when you guys decided to put it together, and then where is it now? Okay, no, no, that's, that's a bloody good question, there. So, I think everyone has different perspectives on this, but where it sort of got progressed from was I wasn't really aware that this whole community thing existed chris was very aware carl's very aware but i wasn't and this was before you know me joining the pre-sales team you know would have conversations you know by the water cooler except you know the classic items and i used to have and i think it still exists i wouldn't go to it because it's probably riddled by now but i used to have this site called that ax guy Stemming from my AX4 days is where I'd put everything around management reporter, around the general ledger, around how you configure it, as well as the mighty Atlas. You know, Atlas back in the day was like what power power apps are now. You know, it was, it was a really awesome tool. And I suddenly went, oh, it'd be good to get, to get this a little bit bigger. And then obviously during those thoughts I was having, Chris and Carl were having very similar ideas. And, you know, I said, well, let's take that AX guy and turn it into something more. Let's t- modernize it and make it more inclusive. So it became those dynamics guys. So that's where the history of the name converted to. So it started off as a, which is quite nice. You start off as a lonely guy that just sort of got thrown this thing called AX4. And all of a sudden you've got this two other guys that are just as passionate about the, the stack as you. And then we said, what we want to do is grow that into a collaborative community tool where we just include absolutely everybody. We all learn together. We unshackle the culture of the past, which is when you're in the IT world or anything to do with a technology stack that your worth is based on what you keep to yourself. And Let's actually push that, bring others in and enable others to do more. And that's why if we fast forward a bit, the Power Platform was such a good fit for us and why we really jumped on that because it's exactly what the Power Platform enabled, the citizen development movement that allowed other people to do more. And I, yeah, really enjoyed that. I got a bit, Mark, I forgot the other questions. <laughs> no, 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 this is brilliant. And kind of if you fast forward to today, what is TDG about today and what are you mainly doing globally? No, great questions. And this is the part where we get a little bit peaks and troughs because you'll actually notice our website isn't up at the moment. So I don't know if you've uh, been on there. So we've, we we had around 5,000 sort of active users and we've taken it down for now because each of us respectively during the time we've, you know, we started those Dynamics Guys, TDG that we, we now refer to it. 
our careers have actually got quite large and we haven't been able to water it as much as we would like. So what we've done is we are going to bring the website back because we knew it, it was a, a point of knowledge for people. There's there hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles there posted by many people. So we, we're not getting rid of that. We're not getting rid of the Power Platform Bank. That is coming back. But for now, we're doing that in the background, make sure it comes back in a more manageable way. And we're going to just, you'll see that we keep promoting hackathons in the background. So we're getting involved in lots of hackathons from the, the very successful Black Minds Matter hackathon led by the initiative of the, the mighty, the beautiful Trisha Sinclair. And now there's many more in the pipelines as well. So interesting, because, you know, I think where I fully first engaged with you lads was at a hackathon in London. Who this will be two years ago now, from memory. It was it was at the... The Hack for Good? Yeah, the... Hack for Good. Was it Hack for Good? Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, was that one of the original hack for good? So was this the and let, we've had so many. It was early in the year. It was early in the year, kind of like February, March, maybe. It was just. Was it the make 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 a wish? Were they the charity? Nah. Oh, oh no, man. no. Are you sure? I can't remember who the charity was. They may be one of the charities because we had the director of wish granting there or something, which was to, to this day the most epic job role title. I've ever heard. Who had that role? This lady. I can't remember her name. Nah, actually, I feel awful. I was. Yeah. I wasn't. This was the one that was pretty much straight after Scottish Summit, the first Scottish Summit. Oh man! I see. We have done. We literally do so many every yeah, year. I'm yeah, struggling to yeah. remember, and that's quite bad, isn't it? Really. I will dig that out because if that's where our journey began, then then I should get it framed. I'm not sure if it began there, but it definitely kind of upped its ante there. I'd say because you know. Oh wow! Uh, what did we do? Well, <laughs> We went to the. Was that, when I dressed, we went, was that when I dressed you in a wig? We went to the pub afterwards. No, okay. no, no. The wigs hadn't come out then. But yeah, it was further down the track. Once we'd done the Power Platform Happy Hour in London, that's where things started to get interesting. And the bar we used to meet up at. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, yeah. That was that was an interesting. Yeah, I, I, I remember <laughs> I, uh, several bars. One that yeah that someone quite left me a gift. And I took it home. And it, yeah, no, we, well, let's leave that with no context. No. All I can say is the outcome was it was a very awkward experience with <laughs> myself and my girlfriend. And let's just leave it there. Let's, let's, if, if, if you want more information, reach out. Exactly, but hey, exactly. that's, that's a little cliffhanger. And you can reach out to Will and get his side of the story and reach out to me and get my side. I don't know if I want to relive that because it was unexplainable. <laughs> and I, I just, to this day, she doesn't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll put it straight if you want. Tell me the history of hackathons and kind of, you know, you're started getting into them and of course it's now become a big focus of of all of you that i've seen in recent times where did that kind of brainchild of the the hack story come from and how did you get started okay yeah so that's yeah interesting so when i think about it really it relates back to our original thoughts for those dynamics guys so i don't know if you've ever seen the first video that chris carl and i did in chris's back garden and it was one of those ones where we had a few beers and we all went this is a great idea and then we got our girlfriends who are also rather intoxicated to record us talking about the concept of TDG and how we wanted, you know, we already knew there was a load of great communities out there and great personal websites. And we just said we wanted to bring all of those together into a collaborative space where we can actually build with each other, you know, standing on the shoulder of giants to see further. I've always loved that that saying. And we suddenly went, well, we're, we're seeing a lot of progress with our power platform bank. You know, that really shot our website up. Our usage went through the roof. And we said, well, if people are really interested in these solutions and downloading these solutions and learning more about them, then how can we get them together to not only collaborate, so make sure that you get a good mixture of those who really know what they're doing and those who want to know more into a room and into a team, more importantly, but also at the same time, the outcomes from that brain power being together, how can we actually make sure the output isn't just a case of, well done, you built a thing, rather than you built something that can go on to being used to to change you know the way a business functions, to change the way that a, a charity collects data, like the the egg path scenario that we can find online. And I'll send you a link to that. You know, and that's what it came you know came from. It was one of those let's bring people together in a collaborative learning environment to be able to provide their skills to those who may need them. You know, and that's not just charities; that can be other people within their team as well. Let's treat this as a true enablement for themselves, for others, and for the wider good. And that, you know, that's the leveraging superior technology to assist society, whether that's a society in regards to a business or to an individual. So, what was the response from Microsoft? Because you guys obviously engaged with Microsoft; they would give you, 
you know, Office 365 Tenant, Azure, you know, the, the Power Platform, et cetera, to work with. Did you first engage it with Microsoft UK and then, you know, Microsoft worldwide? But how much did Microsoft embrace what you guys were up to? So once again, Mark, you've obviously done this a few times, some fantastic questions. We're a bit backwards, Chris Carter and I, and I think that's an understatement really of 2020. But, you know, you'd normally start thinking locally and move move further afield. But actually, because when we picked up Power Platform in the community, it still wasn't as known as it is now, you know, things like Power Addicts and, you know, some of the other really true, true key players in the community. They didn't exist at that point. And really, there was just this guy called Charles Lamana and, and, and there was also Ryan Cunningham. And they weren't as, uh, you know, I'd almost say they're almost like celebrities nowadays. You know, people really look out for their posts. You know, you've got that slight celebrity culture around them. But back then, you know, they were still the power platform, didn't have the adoption that it's that that, that it has now. Now. also the awareness so we actually just went to them because we knew these were the tools you know if you if you think about the first app that i made or not even the first but one of the first so as a sort of community apps it was a super mario game and i had a lot of them reach out about that so i started building up a friendship with them from there and we always went to them for support so charles and ryan always did the sort of judging and also brian dang the mighty brian dang they were always involved in sort of the judging and the input and making sure they amplified the the social posts we did around this so that's kind of the support we got around it because we didn't really need the beautiful thing about this mark is we didn't need financial support because we already can get the tenants for 30 to 90 days exactly. for doing demos, yep, yep. Uh, demo tenants. And actually, partners, you know, you've got the likes of Quantic, you've got the likes of even Hitachi. I was trying not to say that because obviously I'm biased that. And, you know, even KPMG and others who actually pushed money through, pushed, you know, donated their buildings just for the day. You know, that's obviously when we were allowed to congregate together. So from a financial support and from a volunteer support, it was just the community just got involved and it was fantastic. And then Microsoft got involved where we need. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, as in it was at that London event, as in that I was at with the Hack for Good and Microsoft definitely, like, you know, they provided the venue. We're in, the, what was yeah. it? Is it? Was it the Reactor? Is that what it's called? The Microsoft React, yeah. 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 So they, they're fantastic there. They, they 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 provide that, you know, on several occasions. They're happy to provide food as well. So, you know, what I was trying to get at, so they, they've supported us heavily, but support has come from all directions. And that's what I love about this. It's not just a, a one-sided thing. The whole community got involved. And when I say community, I mean Microsoft. I mean individuals. I mean companies all got together to help make this achievable because they could see, you know, the value in something like this. So so how big is things growing? You know, how many countries are you now, whether it's virtual hacks or in-person hacks, have you got up to? Oh, see, I see. I, I would even struggle to remember the numbers. So I think that our biggest one to date was actually the one that you were a judge at, which was the Global Hackathon. So that was, you know, we're close to just around 600 people involved there across numerous countries, you know, with lots of people involved on it and probably one of our biggest collection of sponsorship as well, where people were donating buildings in India, Singapore, Philippines, New Zealand, Australia, and, 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 you know, and we had a, a great, you know, team of, you know, like Eric Sauve, uh, Elaine Yu, the beautiful Elaine Yu, she's epic, you know, Deepash, so, so many people that assisted to make that a reality, uh, you know, and that's something we are going to throw again soon. We, we've got some more local, more local hackathons, and then we're going to launch the, the big global hack again. Which, but the key part there, mate, is we're just building that a hackathon solution to manage these because the ad behind it is an absolute nightmare and we kind of need to eat our own dog food there where we're managing it through excel spreadsheets let's get a power platform solution awesome we could run a hack to build a hack solution but i think that would be too much like an inception yeah. and everything would blow yeah, up yeah 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 so give us an idea of how much you know if other countries if you know wanted to get involved in these type of events or wanting to run local hacks or you know do you have kind of like a blueprint or, or how should they engage with you you know, to get their own hackathons running in their own countries. Absolutely. I mean, we get a, a lot of requests at the moment for for that sort of support. And I think the one thing we, that is nice from this is actually it shows people that anyone can run a hackathon, to be honest. You don't, you know, the experience does help and it makes life easier. And, and you know, if say you don't speak to someone like Carl, Chris or myself or others that have done it, your first hack could be a little bit bumpy because there'll be items that you just haven't thought about. But if they want assistance, they want help, they want pointing in the right direction, they want that bit of enablement, then you know we're just at the end of a, a LinkedIn, a WhatsApp, tweet whatever it may be just reach out that's the whole point about community right all doors are open and you can you can enter through and chat to anyone you want yeah you know one of the things that you know and i've been involved in for 
three or four of them now. And, you know, in person, I think I've done three, three in-person events. And then the virtual side actually might have been two in-person events. The one in Atlanta we did for BizApp Summit. And what I notice is that, you know, people come from such diverse backgrounds, like, you know, and that one particular comes to mind is that, you know, we're doing it for charity and, you know, the charities that would come along with their solutions. And then the people that sat down at the table never met each other, all had different, you know, levels of experience. In my case, my team had two people that were French and spoke very little English, but it didn't stop a, you know, a solution being produced at the end of the day that was highly tangible and usable by the charity, you know, that had submitted their need. Hey, I mean, you know, you, you might not be able to speak French, but technology is the language there, right? So that's that's the key point. So, but yeah, you're spot on. It's one of the things I love the most about it is that that melting pot, that diversity, not just on geographic locations and nationalities, but even on skill sets. Everybody has their own level of diversity that they, they bring to the table. And with that, you get a different perspective, a different approach, and you just learn a lot. So, you know, it is the, the key driver. Whenever we get a hackathon that we're starting to prepare for, we will get, and, and this is always the toughest part, you'll get a list of names through. Now, one question we always ask is, what is your skill set? Now, that's something that is very important because then we can make sure that every team gets a mixture of, you know, Power BI gurus, Power Apps, Canvas App Wizards, Model Driven Apps, Ninjas, you know, and onwards and onwards. I'm going to run out of descriptive terms. But the other key thing we look at is if we know that, say say yourself, Chris, Carl, and I were applied for a hackathon and I saw that come through on a list, I wouldn't put us together because the whole point of this is to stick you with other people to help grow your network, your community, your engagement, and to learn. I learn lots from you, Mark, but, you know, for one day, I can sit with someone else and pick up, you know, maybe the, the new Mark, as it may be, or, you know, I mean, another one of you can never exist, mate, <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> you know, and that, that's important. It's, you know, it's the sort of, you get the, the tangible skill set, but it's the intangible, it's the soft skills, it's the other items that you, you just won't pick up unless you go outside your crowd. Yeah. Yeah, so true, so true. And of course, the amazing talent that comes through, you know, in, in my case, I had a university student. So, you know, it wasn't in his first career yet. And yet, you know, he bought experience that was mind blowing around how agile he was able to pick up. He had never touched the power platform or anything like that. And yet, by the end of the day, you know, understood it, worked with it, and, and, and producing an outstanding solution. And that's exactly it. It's phenomenal. And I think it's actually, you know, once again, it's a glorious point for those that have come with their big brains, their big geniuses, but also it pays dividends to Microsoft and this democratization that they've ran through. You know, anyone can pick this up. Anyone can start building those solutions that meet their needs in a rapid rapid time to value manner. And I think, you know, both sides there, you get, you get a, a really clever student in a room, you give them something that's, you know, incredibly powerful and you can will to your own needs. Then that is a match made in heaven. It really is. What are the gotchas that come to mind? And, and I'm talking about now of the day, you know, people are involved in an actual hack event. They've got their team. And what have you seen as the things that are, how would you say, not focused on, but if you like critical when, they're, when it's kind of like coming to present their final solution and or, you know, create a video around it, that type of thing? Absolutely. No, no. So there's many things that come to mind, but we actually... On the start of every hackathon, we announce these gotchas because we try to set people up for success. You know, although it would be awful if I turn around and go, we try to set people up for yeah. failure. No, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> so there are some key ones. The first one is when you get to a hackathon, you're caffeined up. You probably got to eating some of the sweets that are on the table. You know, you're ready to go. The atmosphere is great. There's a bit of rock music in the background. And you just want to start building. You want to get in there and build, 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 build. And then all of a sudden you get to the end of it, you go, well, I was building this. What were you building? And you're like, well, I'm, I was building this. And you're like, well, what is this? It's some sort of mongrel. It's a <laughs> cur of a solution that wouldn't help anyone. So the key, key, key part is just to, even though you've got that awesome, epic energy, keep that a little bit subdued at the start and get to designing. Get out your pen and paper, whether that be on, a, on your tablet or whether that be actual old school, you know, whiteboard type stuff. And draw out what's the process flow? What's the kind of high level user stories that we're achieving here? How does it connect together? What will then be our data model? Because as you know, Mark, we get a good data model sitting underneath this built on the, you know, the beautiful CDS. Then we're already halfway there. You build a model driven app. You've got all your components to slide together. At least you'll have something at the end. The other key thing is to ensure that you understand your role within your hackathon team. You know, 
And it doesn't have to be rigid. It's just got to be a case that, you know, I'm the one that's building the Power BI reports, but I also want to have a little bit of dabble in some of the, the cognitive services or the AI builder. And then the other key thing, which is always, always, always overlooked, is designate a project manager because you'll still get scope creep. You'll still get people wandering off and doing their own thing and no one will keep an eye on the time. So true. Yeah. And you know what? The last thing is once you get into it, you can get stressed. It's meant to be fun. Stay relaxed. Have a good time. You know, it doesn't matter if you don't get your solution finished by the end, because I tell you what, if it's a good solution, just keep building it for the next day and day and day and day with your team, with these new friends you've met and actually deliver something at the end that you can fold back into the community that can hopefully assist people. I love it. And I will add to your list is that if there's a deadline that you need to meet and do some type of presentation, it's important to have somebody working on that from about midday through what that presentation will look like and you know that somebody's responsible for that so that you can deliver your minimum viable product to the judges absolutely spot on yeah no absolutely spot on because i, I think it was at the global hack we saw a, 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 some panicked faces and not knowing what to do <laughs> yeah, yeah or not even knowing you know necessarily how to do screen recording or uh, you know to demo their solution or or turn their videos on or or do you know video editing can be a massive problem oh, if you've never done it before and there's nobody in your team that's done it before so even you know the powerpoint presentation and stuff so think about it early and you should be on track no abs absolutely mate could not agree more and yeah no good, that's a that's a good one maybe we should add that to our, our fifth point it's just it doesn't fit well in a grid for the slide so so <laughs> you know yourself kyle and mr huntingford were all started at hitachi you know, I feel like I came to the UK and I busted the lot of you up. You know, Kyle went off to, to, <laughs> to he's at Avenard, right? Or is it at Accenture? No, Avenard is actually. Yeah, so he went Avenard. to Avenard. He's You're still holding well. the Fort Hitachi, and, and of course, Mr. Huntingford joined Microsoft. So, oh, yes. And he's, and he's smashing it there as well. I mean, Kyle and Chris, very proud of them both. They're absolutely conquering the world. And they've left me behind in a, in a boat somewhere. It's very sad. <laughs> but this is the thing is that you're obviously smashing it there because, you know, I'm hearing that, you know, Hitachi Europe is just growing, particularly in the power platform space from strength to strength. So how do you guys, you know, nice stay connected, engage, that type of thing when you've all your careers have all kind of skyrocketed off in different directions? Well, you probably know about Carl and I, which actually, if I left that there, that could be, that could sound, come across very weird. But he literally, I could go into my garden right now, pick up a big chunky stone, and, which I do and hit his house, and just yeah. throw it. And I'd hit his house. And if I'm very lucky on a warm day, maybe hit him. And so he's a, I stay up to date with Carl all the time, you know, lunches, dinners. And actually, it's quite nice because he brings a different perspective to the conversation around the technology stack now because he's got this, you know, this, this Avenard approach. I discuss, you know, about the more the Hitachi approach. Obviously, we keep the trade secrets away from each other, which is fine. You know, it's the unwritten rule of, of totally, working the totally. community, really, isn't it? Yeah, which, to be honest, it's lovely, you know. And, and when we get to catch up, it's, it's a good proper catch up. You know, we went out for a dinner the other day. And then it's the same with Chris. We WhatsApp, we chat daily. I actually just got a WhatsApp off him while I'm on this, I was about to say, cool, but podcast with you. So it just hasn't, nothing's changed. Although, I do find for some reason Chris and I keep sending each other weird gifts. I don't know if you've followed any of this, and to be honest, we don't really post much about it. But so he's done a couple of things. Like every birthday, he will send me something that will just annoy the hell out of me. So <laughs> one year it was a kilo of glitter <laughs> that went all around my house. And then when I was, I turned 31 on August the 8th, so, you know, last month, I came back a bit, a little bit blurry eyed as I do. I opened up this, this parcel, which had kids drawings all over it. And I did think, well, maybe this is a hunting for box. And as I opened it, this platform came out and threw polystyrene balls all around my house. I'm talking <laughs> thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And then I digged inside it and it was just a blow up man for me to enjoy, apparently. <laughs> so that was the, yeah. but then on top of that, last Christmas, every two weeks, weeks i sent him a christmas ornament but a weird one like one that was like a glittery box of chicken nuggets that you can hang on his tree and one was a large aubergine <laughs> that you can hang on his tree all christmas deck you know and then there was bigfoot dinosaurs all sorts but we seem to have kept that up throughout the year now and you know every so often i'll get something in the post and it'll just be a really random I gift i love it so once again that helps keep the fun and the momentum that going so cool by the way you mentioned something there and i forgot to touch on it is dinosaurs how did that become such a big feature of tdg I don't know. It's just and what, unicorns, you know, dinosaurs, are epic. unicorns, <laughs> and badgers, badgers now, and exactly, everything. Exactly. They're the best animals known to man, right? 
dinosaurs, badgers, and unicorns. If only you could sort of smash all those together in some sort of epic, I don't know, what, what would you even call that? A badger unicorn saw? No, we can do better. <laughs> What's your favourite <laughs> wig you've ever given? I like the blonde one I gave on your leaving. <laughs> Remember? You had little red yeah, bows the, the in little your hair. blonde wig. Yeah, I, you looked, I say, you know, if you shaved that beard, Mark, that was uh, quite a delight. You know, unexpected joy from that day. I think it the, really was. the unicorn judging how it hat was, that was pretty epic. <laughs> I mean, you know, they say that Amazon, they obviously keep track of yeah, your yeah, data yeah. points to see what to offer you next. They have no idea with me. <laughs> you know, we, I, we, I, I go from ordering, you know, really, you know, one of my hobbies is, is, is collecting books. So I have some really great books that I order that I really put effort into looking for, you know, and I, and I grab those in the next minute. It's a unicorn wig then it's a, an, a glittery aubergine christmas decoration then it's like oh okay he's now ordered you know a bottle of whiskey and it, it just doesn't make sense that I've, I've broken amazon I've totally broken. awesome i tell you what in new zealand <laughs> i miss amazon oh man i miss it no Do you not have it no. Over? what no don't tell jeff bezos honestly in gonna... london oh. you know i used to just about have deliveries every second day and now it's man it's, what it's for shocking oh, oh. Man, well that sucks i mean everything comes through the door now even my my meals i'm using hello fresh and i gotta admit game changer if you've got a busy i, mean, I feel like i'm doing some product placement here if you've got a busy day can't get around to cooking i'm sure what to cook and order exactly. hello fresh your friend so simple way eh? we lived on that in london hello fresh it was brilliant oh man, i've only just discovered it oh, why didn't man. you recommend it nah. back then Game Loved change. It. I got it. Actually, it was it was Kyle's significant wow. other, mm-hmm. Lisa, that sort of pushed mm. me towards that. And yeah, you know, she's a good cook. Sooner. Oh, mate, she's she's a phenomenal yeah. all rounder, really, isn't yeah. she? Lucky had guy. A good meal at their, at their place. <laughs> so good, man. We're coming to the end of our time, and always like to wrap Don't up with a me, few Mark. quick fire questions. Are you ready? Oh shit! Oh sorry, I should not swap. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, carry on. <laughs> we, now, I, I'm now, impressed. I got this one. Go for it. Now, Quick, now fire I have me to up. Put not safe for work on the oh, profanity <laughs> on, on my podcast listing. If you're doing that, I'm going in. I'm going <laughs> right at the end. It's going to be five minutes of swearing to quick rapid uh, question. <laughs> okay, go for it, buddy. I'm random. excited. If you could never work again, how would you spend your time? Reading. Like, and what's studying. the most illegal thing you've done? Yeah, illegal. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Good answer. Good answer. What, what's your rap name? MC Willie. <laughs> what's your dream car? I don't have a driving license, but I quite like. What do I like? I like where Tesla's going. You know, I think what Tesla produces in the next 20 years will be my dream car. I can't believe you don't have a driver's license. Would you rather give up a smartphone or, a com- or your computer? Tomato, tomato there really nowadays, isn't it? But I guess my smartphone because I can do more. I can, I can move faster with my huge hands on a computer. What? important truth do very few people agree with you about these are quick fire and then that's like you know bertrand <laughs> russell level of philosophy you got barack spinoza's coming out of mark here what important truth to to people well i'm quite good at making people agree i have got to come back to you on that mark let's 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 leave that for the comments on the on the tweets i'll have to think Sounds of something good. well mate it's been good to do this finally with you stay safe and we'll do it again sometime Mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. If we're going to do it again sometime, it's best we start organising it now because it's going to probably take two years to get to for the next one, isn't it? Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me on, buddy. Much love. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, Business Applications MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 Guy. If there's a guest that you would like to see on the show, please message me on LinkedIn and let me know. Please like and subscribe. If you want to leave a review, go to nz365guy.com forward slash review for my current reviews and options to leave your own. See you next time.